Hello, my name is Yun Zhang from Case Western Reserve University. I'm going to present our paper titled Magnetic Resonance Fingerprinting Using the Quick Echo Splitting NMR Imaging Technique. It was recently published in MRM. First, let me start with some background introduction of MR fingerprinting. Instead of using a set of fixed parameters in conventional acquisitions, MIF acquires a series of highly unsampled images with pseudo-random acquisition parameters. So the acquired signal is always in transit state. MIF pursues unique signal evolutions for different tissue types. It simulates expected signals using block simulations or extended phase graph, then uses a pattern recognition algorithms to quantify multiple tissue properties simultaneously. Previous results from Denmar in her Nature paper show that T1, T2, proton density, and off resonance can be quantified simultaneously and efficiently using a balanced SSFP-based MIF method. Because of the pattern recognition algorithm used in the framework, MIF allows to explore all degrees of freedom in sequence design. It is possible to design a sequence within MIF framework to target any particular tissue properties with design features. In this study, we would like to design an MIF sequence with extremely low IF power deposition to quantify T1 and T2 values. There are many reasons to reduce the IF energy in MR scans. Here, I just use DBS or deep brain stimulation as an example. DBS is a popular therapy for advanced Parkinson disease or any other movement disorders. It is getting more and more popular. MR is an important tool in locating the electrodes after surgery and investigating symptoms in patients implanted with DBS. However, the upheating on the leads is a safety concern during the MR scans. Typically, DBS manufacturers suggest to use HSR less than 0.1 watts per kilogram to scan the patient with the device at 1.5 tesla magnet. This limits flip angles used in the power sequence and constrains the contrast of images. As shown on the right side, the image acquired with the SAR of 0.1 watts per kilogram is proton density weighted, which is difficult to get diagnostic information. Here, we want to develop methods to quantify T1, T2, and the proton density with ultra low IF power. So the diagnostic information can be retrieved directly from the quantitative maps as well as any contrast weight images generated on demand. For reducing the IF energy in the power sequence, we choose Quest as a template to build our sequence. Quest represents quick echo splitting NMR imaging technique. It was proposed in early 90s and tried to replace EPI sequence. Quest uses minimum number of IF pulses to acquire the maximum number of signals, so it could reduce SAR dramatically. If the gaps between the IF pulses increase in a fashion as 1, 2, 4, 8, as shown in this slide, we can use the phase graph to show in the number of signals. As shown here, with these four IF pulses, it can generate four FIDs where the red dots are and 11 high order echoes indicated by the green dots. We implemented this 4F quest block in a Siemens scanner. For this quest sequence, we use conventional unbalanced slice selection gradients to achieve the phasing moment between the IF pulses and used a spiral trajectories to acquire these high order echoes. These spiral readout gradients 
is zero and the first moment compensated. The readout time is 7.4 milliseconds. For this particular study, this barrel requires 12 interleaves to fully sample the inner 25 by 25 matrix and the 48 interleaves to fully sample the 256 by 256 matrix size. To fully resolve T1 and T2 map, this 4 f quest block was repeated 15 times after an inversion pulse. So for each spiral arm, we used 60 i pulse to acquire 225 frames. The flip angle was randomly selected from 0 to 60 degrees, as shown the blue curve here on the left. And the minimum IF gap was also varied from 10 to 30 milliseconds randomly. The scan time was 67 seconds per slice with acquiring 12 spiral arms. With these acquisition parameters, we calculate a dictionary using the block simulations with a range of T1 and T2 values. Here is an example of signal evolution at T1 of 880 milliseconds and T2 of 60 milliseconds. A complex inner product was used to match the acquired signal to each entry of the dictionary. The entry with the maximum inner product is select 2 represents the acquired signals. Here, the black curve represents the acquired signal and the dotted red curve is matched dictionary entry. First, we value the T1 and T2 values from the MF quest against the golden standard spin echo method. On the left side, you see the T1 map, T2 map, and the proton density map from the phantom. On the right side, we plot the T1 and T2 values from the MIF quest against the T1 and T2 standards matched by the spin echo method, which shows that the MIF quest methods are in good agreement with the traditional spin echo method. We also did the same validation in in vivo brain. It various region of interest in green matter and white matter. MF quest has similar T1, T2 values in the golden standard spin echo method. I want to emphasize that the acquisition time of MF quest was about one minute. Spin echo for T1 was about one hour and T2 was about 30 minutes. With quantitative maps, any contrast weighted images can be generated on demand. Here, from left to right, I just show T1 weighted, T2 weighted, flare, and the proton density weighted images as examples. If you remember that the conventional MR methods at star of 0.1 watts per kilogram is only able to generate proton density weighted images. Here, we can synthesize or generate any contrast weighted images based on the T1, T2, and the proton density maps. We also compare the MR quest to the T1 weighted flash and the T2 weighted turbo spin echo in the global SAR estimated at Siemens 3T scanner. This plot shows that during the collision, the SAR of MR quest was 0.03 watts per kilogram, flash was 0.2 watts per kilogram, and the turbo spinnacle was 0.4 watts per kilogram. In conclusion, we developed an MF method with ultra low F energies. Balance SP and Quest demonstrated two extreme examples in terms of acquiring the coherence pathways. We think that the optimized methods may sit somewhere in between. Future development could be a balance between the number of high pulses, signal to noise ratio in high order echoes, and the total acquisition time. Further accelerations could be achieved 
to combine the current methods with the parallel imaging and the compressed sensing. With this, um, I would like to thank everyone in the MR research group at Case West Reserve University, Kirchner Liu at Siemens for his technical support and our funding sources.